This afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, we got the news everyone was dreading. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. That's the man heading the multinational task force that has spent the last four days searching round the clock for the five people on board the Titan submersible. They've used planes, ships, a submarine, subsea robots, even remote operated vehicles capable of descending all the way to the ocean floor, to the wreck of the Titanic itself, where the Titan was headed. But after an expensive, exhausting, and hopeful search, it is now believed the Titan was destroyed. Here's how it happened. Essentially, we found uh, five different major pieces of, of debris that uh, told us that it was the uh, remains of the Titan. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, an ROV, a remote operated vehicle, was able to scour the ocean floor near the Titanic wreckage. A few hundred meters away, they found this. The initial thing we found was the nose cone, which was outside of the pressure hull. That was clue number one. Soon after, they found a large debris field where they found other components. They analyzed what they looked like, compared them to the design specs of the Titan submersible, and it seemed like a match. Shortly thereafter, we found the, a second smaller debris field. Within that debris field, uh, we found the, the other end of the pressure hull, the, the aft end bell, um, which was basically the, comprised of the totality of that pressure vessel. It was all consistent with the components used to build the Titan, but they also think the debris tells them something about how the Titan went down. Not a slow, steady leak, but rather a violent, sudden change in pressure. Uh, this is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor, uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. A catastrophic implosion is what can happen when you are subjected to the incredible pressure of being so deep underwater. You know, the, the Titan wreckage is about 13,000 feet below sea level. When you're that far down, the forces acting on the hull of the ship, many thousands of pounds per square inch. You know, I've heard it compared to having the equivalent of an Empire State Building crushing you from all sides. We've taken uh, a regular styrofoam coffee cup and that's then strapped to the outside of the submersible uh, in a net bag. And when we eventually come up topside and, and recovered, uh, the actual same coffee cup is, is basically a, a wow. bad size. The big question right now is how such a catastrophic implosion could have happened. You know. It, it was an experimental sub. That was literally written on the death waiver passengers have to sign to be allowed on board. And a lot has been said about the cavalier attitude that the company's CEO had when it came to safety, innovation, and pushing the envelope with you know, new materials never before used in a sub of this kind. But we also learned something from this afternoon's news conference that tells us about the timing of the implosion. You know, you'll recall the Titan lost contact with its mothership on the surface partway through its descent. This was on Sunday morning. They should have returned by the afternoon, but didn't. And it was only that evening the Coast Guard was alerted. Then it was roughly another day until a Canadian plane would arrive dropping sonar buoys into the water. You can think of those like underwater microphones. It gave search teams listening capability. So here's the thing. There's this period between Sunday and Monday where nobody had any clue what was going on down there. And the suggestion seems to be from the Coast Guard, that's when the implosion likely happened. Uh, this uh, was a uh, catastrophic uh, implosion of the vessel, which would have generated uh, a significant broadband sound uh, down there that uh, the sonar buoys would have picked up. Admiral 
they would have heard the implosion if it had happened while their sonar buoys were deployed, but they heard nothing. I mention this because it tells us something about what the crew's final moments might have been like. You see, the great fear here was that death would have been slow and unbearable. Imagine you're trapped all alone in a 22-foot hunk of carbon fiber. It's cold because sunlight can't penetrate the water. There's limited food, limited water to drink. Only a single porthole that you can't even look through without powering the ship's lights because it's pitch black on the other side and you're running out of oxygen. Perhaps a silver lining in all of this is that in the case of a violent implosion, death would have been instantaneous. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them. And I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time. On board the Titan, Hamish Harding, a British billionaire explorer, Paul-Henri Narjolet, a renowned French diver, Shazeda Dawood and his son Suleiman, two members of one of Pakistan's wealthiest families, and Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company behind this doomed voyage, finding its final resting place not far from where the Titanic itself sank more than a hundred years ago.